Hi, it's Adam from Months and PCs, and today we're going to be looking at the Logitech G Pro Wireless Gaming Mouse and the budget friendly 305 Wireless Gaming Mouse. Is it worth paying more than double for the G Pro Wireless? Well, the answer isn't quite that simple. Let's get into it. Let me start by saying wireless gaming mice have come a long way in the last few years. My last mouse was bought around about five years ago. It was very bulky, weighing about 150 grams. Its responsiveness was okay, but nothing to get excited about. Fast forward five years, and we have a huge selection of wireless gaming mice available from all different brands. One of my favorite brands, and purely because of how reliable they've been, is Logitech. So as an upgrade, I jumped onto Amazon Prime Day to see what deals I could muster up. I managed to get the G Pro Wireless for £66 and the G305 for only £39. Since Prime Day has finished, the G Pro Wireless has increased to £88.43 and the G305 has stayed at £39. So let's look at the spec of these mice. Firstly, the G Pro Wireless is using Logitech's Hero 25K sensor, giving a range from 100 to 25,600 dpi, which is absolutely insane. It also boasts a one millisecond report rate for super responsive movements, a built-in battery with up to 60 hours with no RGB and 48 hours with RGB. So that's 48 hours then. It sits at 125mm long, 65.5mm wide and 40mm tall. It weighs only 80 grams in all and I have to say it's really noticeable. The mouse is PowerPlay compatible if you have the PowerPlay mat, which charges while you're using the mouse so that you don't need to manually plug it in. It has a USB to micro USB charging cable with a plastic connector that helps the cable stay in place so that you can use the mouse while plugged in. It doesn't take too long to charge, so you'll rarely need to use it plugged in. A USB dongle that can be stored inside of the mouse plugs into the PC and you're ready to go. The mouse has two side buttons on both sides with magnetic covers that can be moved if you are right or left handed or maybe you like using both hands. If you do, stop it. Just stop it now. Now let's move on to the G305. So this mouse uses Logitech's Hero Sensor, but this time the range is from 200 to 12,000. I personally find the sweet spot between 3,000 and 4,500, so the difference in sensitivity for me didn't feel any difference. Again, it's a one millisecond response rate, so the responsiveness felt very similar to the G Pro Wireless. The battery this time uses a single AA battery, which apparently gives you 250 hours of battery life. I've been testing both of these mice for a couple of weeks, and it hasn't died on me yet, so no reason to think otherwise. The mouse doesn't have any RGB, only a couple of small lights to show you which DPI setting you are on. The G305 is 116.6mm long, 62.15mm wide and only 38.2mm high. Now this doesn't sound too dissimilar to the G Pro Wireless, however it feels completely different. Due to having the AA battery instead of a lightweight built-in battery, this mouse comes in at 99 grams, but most of that weight is towards the rear of the mouse, and it is slightly noticeable. Looking at the packaging of both mice, you can see which mouse is the more expensive. The G Pro Wireless is shrink-wrapped and has a slide-out style box showing only the mouse with minimal packaging. The G305, in contrast, has a flat box and you pull everything out at once. Inside both boxes you have your mouse, some warranty information, your USB dongle and a micro USB cable. The G305 also comes with a AA battery. Both mice have a nice feel about them, with the G Pro Wireless feeling slightly smoother overall. The G Pro Wireless being slightly taller and longer fits in my hand much easier, particularly as I have large hands. The G305 was good for using the claw grip, meaning for most first person shooters, this mouse worked absolutely perfectly. However, when it came to editing for long periods of time, I prefer using a palm grip, and the mouse felt a little short, giving me a slight wrist ache after a few hours. The G Pro Wireless, however, fits perfectly into my hand and is perfect to use with both the claw grip and the palm grip, meaning it was more versatile for my use. The mouse clicks feel very responsive, although the G305 does have a louder click sound. The scroll reel is slightly firmer and not as smooth as the G Pro Wireless. 
Having the option to move the side thumb buttons may be a deal breaker for those left-handers of the world. My only issue with both of these mice is a small one. It's the DPI button. On the G305, it's right behind the scroll wheel and very easy to catch mid-game. Trust me, it's happened. The G Pro Wireless have kept it out of the way on the bottom of the mouse, but when you change game, unless you've set it up correctly in the Logitech G Hub, the mouse defaults to the lowest DPI and you have to turn it over, push the button to change it. Like I said, these are very small issues. So to answer the question, is the G Pro mouse worth the additional price tag? In my use scenario, yes it is, but it's not for everyone. It's a fantastic mouse that feels great even after hours of use. It's improved my Call of Duty skills, although they weren't great to start with. It's light, it has RGB, and being slightly larger is perfect size for my hands. That's not saying the G305 is a bad mouse. At less than half the price currently, I would seriously be considering the G305. For gaming and general everyday use, this mouse is perfect. You make some small compromises on the way and no RGB, but if you're on a budget, this would definitely get my vote. I've put links to both mice in the description below. Thanks for watching, hit the thumbs up, and I will catch you in the next one.